With all this linear algebra background, let's see what things we can deduce from the Tonti diagram. So recall that the Tonti diagram has the joint displacements U, the member changes in length delta, the member internal forces F, and the joint loads P, interconnected like this. So delta equals B times U, F equals E times delta, and B transposed F equals P. And then the stiffness matrix K equals B transpose DB. So first, let's consider external work. External work is the work done by the joint loads on the joint displacements. So in terms of dot products, this is P transposed U. We can substitute P equals B transposed F, which then becomes F transpose B times U. Think about why that is. Then we can regroup the parentheses. Think about why that is. And we get F transpose delta. This we recognize is the work done by the member forces on the changes in length, which is nothing but internal work. So what we see here is external work equals internal work, and this is what we know as the principle of virtual work. So the fact that the equilibrium matrix is the transpose of the B matrix leads to external work equals internal work. The next fact is that the stiffness matrix is symmetric. So K equals B transpose DB. Let's do K transpose. It's B transpose DB, the quantity transpose. That's B transpose E transpose B. And that's equal to B transposed E times B, which is nothing but K. So K transposed equals K, so K is symmetric. And think about why some of these intermediate steps are true. The next fact is the stiffness matrix is positive definite. So let's take a U that's not equal to zero and do U transposed KU. That's equal to U transposed B transposed DB times U. That's BU, the whole transposed E times BU. Again, why is that? We'll see later that BU is not equal to zero. So BU equals delta. So this is equal to delta transpose E times delta, which is greater than zero because E is positive definite. Again, why is E positive definite? Think about that. It turns out that one half U transpose KU is the elastic energy stored in the members of the truss. And this is why K being positive definite is significant. So there are some other features of the stiffness matrix that don't directly come from the Tonti diagram, but this seems like a good place to look at those features as well. So the stiffness matrix is sparse. What this means is for large structures, the stiffness matrix will have lots of zeros in it. Think about why that may be the case. So one hint is because of connectivity. Not all joints are connected to each other. Uh, only joints that are connected by members participate in the stiffness matrix. So that's the reason for the sparsity. The last property of the last feature of the stiffness matrix is we talk about is a column by column interpretation of the stiffness matrix. So let's take the stiffness matrix and multiply it by a vector that is all zeros except one in the jth spot, like this. Okay, so if we multiply this vector by the stiffness matrix, basically it pulls out the kth column of the stiffness matrix. So what this says is that the jth column of the stiffness matrix equals the external forces needed to produce a unit displacement in degree of freedom j while keeping all of the displacement zero, because that is exactly what the 0, 0, 1, 0, 0 vector is that we multiply this by the stiffness matrix.